inside the box. Well, of course, you get the cap itself. You get a two gigabyte micro SD card, you get a USB A to B mini lead, the remote control, a stereo headset with a microphone on it, and you get the eight inch CD with some drivers on it, and a power adapter, which is a European standard one for charging it up, but you can charge it up through any USB port. Let's take a closer look at that cap itself. Well, it's rather a normal looking black cloth cap. It doesn't look unusual at all. On the back is an adjustable buckle to adjust it for various head sizes. It just about fits mine. The only bit that is unusual is this lens on the front here, which I'll show you inside the cap, how that matches up with the electronics. Those are located behind this flap, which is held in place by two pieces of Velcro at either side. And I'll talk you around the buttons on this one and the sockets. At the bottom left here is the headphone socket. Just above that is the USB mini lead for charging and data transfer, the micro SD card slot there, an on off switch, a couple of LEDs there to show you what's going on and a Bluetooth pairing switch there. And so that you know what it's doing when you've got it on your head, it's got a built in vibration motor. Which is a pretty smart idea. Now that headphone socket on the side there, the headphones that come with it have a rather short lead on them and that's because they only have to go from the hat to your ears rather than all the way up your body. Now they do have this microphone that has a clicky answer and hang up switch on them which is rather useful. Uh, but unfortunately you can't play music through them, you can't stream it from your mp3 device. You have to put the music on your micro SD card because it doesn't do A2DP music. However, if you're playing mp3s through it, you can stop and start them, jump back and forth and turn the volume up and down through the remote control. But the trouble is there's a bit of a background hiss on all the mp3s. But the biggest problem with it is that you look like an absolute buffoon with that wire hanging down the side of your head. Okay, so as an MP3 player, it's a bit of a dead loss, but really the main event is the camera on the front. So let's go outside and see what the footage from that looks like. So here I am outside. My hat has just buzzed to let me know that it's recording and I'm going to walk around spinning fields in Manchester. Now it was a lovely warm sunny day as you can see from the chaps wearing the shirts on the left here. So this would normally be perfect conditions for going out and recording with a camera like this. So it's not going to get any better than this. And as you can see from the footage, it's looking rather dull and overcast and washed out. It reminds me a little bit of one of those Lomo cameras or perhaps an old Polaroid film that's passed its sell by date. It records at 640 by 480 and it's supposed to be 30 frames a second, although it drops about 10 of those, so you're looking at maybe 20 or 21 frames a second, which makes it a bit jerky. But the weird thing about this camera is the sound. It's totally unusable. Everything sounds like a sound effect from THX 1138, as I'll demonstrate to you now. Everything sounds very strange and echoey. It's a little bit like listening to sound underwater, and you certainly can't make out what people are saying on the recordings. So there you have it, that's the MF cap, and maybe MF shouldn't stand for multifunction in the end because it's not particularly good at any of the functions. To recap, if you'll excuse the pun, those functions are an inconvenient mono Bluetooth headset by inconvenience, I mean that wire hanging down the side of your head, the 640 by 480 weird effect camera with a kind of washed out footage and terrible Android-esque THX1138 sound, and a buzzy MP3 player.